Today I'm gonna to go over basic safety tips and operation of a wood stove. So safety first, right? Not only to keep your family safe, but to make sure Santa Claus can keep bringing the presents. If you have kids, that's all the motivation they'll need to help keep you on track to properly maintaining your wood stove. First, let's talk about smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Where should you place these devices in your home? National Fire Prevention Association recommends that you have at least one in each bedroom, one outside of each sleeping area, which could be in hallway or a loft, and one on each level of your home. Furthermore, they recommend having a fire extinguisher on each level of your home, as well as one in the kitchen and one in the garage. To save you a bit of time and money, you can use combination detectors. These detect both smoke and carbon monoxide. And if you need some recommendations, you can check out the links in the description below. Now, while these devices are convenient, they definitely should not be used as the only indicator of problems. So let's move on to proper maintenance. One of the most important steps is to clean your chimney. But since it's in the middle of the burning season, I'll be doing a more detailed video on that in the future. You also wanna make sure you inspect your chimney cap for obstructions that may impede airflow. You also wanna make sure you clean your chimney stack twice per year, generally before and after the burning season. You might think, well, if I just cleaned it right after the burning season, why would I need to clean it again right before the next burning season? Well, let's say it's the first snow of the season. Your toes are going numb, start up a wood fire in your stove, curl up with an apple cider hot chocolate in the loved one. That's definitely not the time you wanna find out that a bird made its home in your chimney, and the only way for smoke to escape is into your home. So just do yourself a favor and at least clean and inspect it twice a year. Speaking of proper airflow, Make sure when you start a fire, your air damper is fully open. Usually they're located on the bottom of the stove. This allows fire to build up heat quickly and generate its own updraft. After about 15 minutes, you can adjust the damper to slow the intake of air and increase the length of your burn. So what happens if you're in a high wind area? In our case, sometimes we get winds of over 20 miles per hour. With a typical chimney cap like we have right now, those high winds tend to force air down the chimney stack into our home. This is also called a downdraft. This makes it very difficult for us to start a fire in high wind conditions without smoke pouring into our home. To prevent this in the future, I'll be replacing the chimney cap after the burning season. Again, that'll be in a more detailed video coming up in the future. For now though, I keep a close eye on the weather and I don't start a fire if there's high winds expected at all that day. So how do you clean out your wood stove? Well, first and foremost, never, ever, ever use a vacuum. Only use a fireplace shovel and only scoop those ashes into a metal bin. I've seen embers in my fireplace last up to 12 hours after the last fire cooled down. I've also scooped ashes into a metal bin and hours later, that bin was hot to the touch, even though I didn't see any embers. If you need any recommendations on a metal bin or a decent set of fireplace tools, check the links in the description below. Max, how do you clean the glass? Well, believe it or not, the fire itself will actually clean most of it. But if you have a stubborn area where there's the brown or the black soot just caked on, what you can do is take a damp cloth, dip it in the ash from the fireplace, making sure that it's definitely cool to the touch, and then use that ash to gently rub off the stains on the glass. If any of you have used Brasso on metal, that's basically the procedure that you'll use. Now you can also purchase specialized glass cleaners for this, but I prefer to use natural solutions wherever possible. Lastly, if the hinges squeak on your door, uh, make sure you use a high temp lubricant such as dry graphite. Uh, be careful though, this stuff really kind of makes a mess. If you made it this far in the video, there are two other items on top of the stove you may have noticed. So we noticed an abnormally high amount of static electricity in our home. And in searching for a solution, I got this idea from my mom. If you put a pot or a tea kettle or even a cast iron container on top of your wood stove and fill it with water, it acts as a humidifier. Now, when you have low humidity and high winds, you tend to get a lot of static electricity. So by humidifying our home in this way, it actually helps reduce the static electricity quite a bit. The second item on the far side is a heat powered stove fan. Our wood stove is actually located between two common rooms. The blower we have on top of our wood stove only blows in one direction. Having the heat powered fan actually helps warm up both common rooms much quicker than just the blower alone. It's definitely a must have item in my opinion. So again, I'll be making a video in the future that's gonna cover the chimney cap replacement, cleaning the chimney stack, as well as replacing 
the door gasket. So if you found any of this helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you need any of the items that we went over today, make sure you check the links in the description below. It doesn't cost you any extra, and the small commission we get really helps out our channel. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.